Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. Here we are at the beginning of a new semester. You're the future of Nebraska. But believe me, though I cannot see you, I have faith in you. Okay, here's the embarrassing thing. Everyone else in my family has a degree in English. I am the only one who does not... We have to bleep that out. We will. Okay. Hey, Mom. Hey, you should come say hi to the people. Hi, people. Just Where lean in. Lean over here. Oh, hi. hi Look, people. it's my mom. Hi. She's got her Christmas gear on. Yeah, Christmas gear. Yeah, thank you, Mom. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Don't listen to anything I say here. I'm going to... Hey, Mom. Let's take a picture of you. What? Teaching. But a video. We'll edit Jesus. all this. We'll edit all of this out. Don't you worry, brother. Okay, am I even here? Do you, I have a script. I have an avatar of your face you can use for all of this. Happy New Year's hat. Hashtag emoji. Hashtag okay. avatar. Yeah, way to put that English degree to use, buddy. I write. I write English real good. Okay, academic integrity. The imp of the perverse. Contact me. Come see me. In my office hours, I sit there alone staring out the window and thinking about death. It's not unpleasant, but it is lonely. And when you come see me, I'm reminded about death, that there is a future. And that future is about death. What? That's pretty dark, man. What? I study the Puritans. Yeah. Okay. So come see me. Required texts. Uh, there's eight novels that we're reading in this course. They're available at the Union. There um, is the University eight Bookstore. novels, really? It ain't, there is. It ain't, there's eight novels, there ain't no more. There used to be more. I cut one of them out. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm thinking about death. Is there anything else I should say about myself that they need to know? They're gonna learn. That time you busted your head open when we were playing basketball drunk after Eric's party, when I took you to the emergency room. And they didn't give me any anesthetic. And they shaved <laughs> right into your hairline. Yeah. Yeah. Did I bleed on your car seat? It wasn't my car. It was uh, mom's car. Okay. That's enough about me. Thank you, people. Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. I can't help but notice, after reviewing the previous video, that it was a lot more death-filled than, in fact, it was in real life. I blame my brother for this. Hey! Staring out the window and thinking about death. All right, that's fair. I'm a very peppy guy, actually, in real life. I'm an optimist. And I think about death the way Walt Whitman does. That's my brother Dan behind the camera, and apparently also behind all of the editing, which was sinister, thinking about death. Okay, here we go. And then why would an author choose to write a novel instead of a song, like my brother over there? Okay, that's enough. They also have blood sacrifices that nobody tells you about until you, well... Less death. Okay, fine. Yeah, I know, I can't talk about it. Can you, can you see Santa over there? Okay, good. I should make sure Santa's in the frame. I feel like Santa's always oh, watching over every word I say. He's like, explain form to me. Boy meets girl, girl kills boy, girl gets away with it. Less death. It is the characters. Boy is scandalously rich punk who's asking for it. Girl is troubled soul with a difficult past and a fondness for sharp objects. There you go. Detective is a fallen alcoholic angel who has a fondness for sharp objects and troubled girls. The third component is style. And you just know it's J.K. Rowling, right? That's that's like how she writes. Rowling. Rowling? Yeah. Rowling. That's just J.K. Rowling. That's J. just K. how Rowling. she writes. Don't mispronounce the name. Oh my God. That's a $10 million lawsuit right there. Bollocks. Lorries. What is that, uh, what's that TV show where the guy, the hero is a serial killer? Dexter. Magnum P.I. Whoa. I do love Tom Selleck. Have you seen Tom Selleck Waterfall Sandwich? Yes. Google it. Okay. So, as a result, <laughs> anyway. They, they all Googled that like six years ago. Uh, well. Stop that. I'm old. You may be familiar with the end of Mark Twain's novel Huckleberry Finn, where Huck Finn lights out for the territories. Spoiler! Hello! Sorry. Did, doesn't everybody have to read that in high school? Shit. Mad. Moby Dick! Mad. Do we have to bleep that out? Dick? Dan. Rebellious Romantics, a perfect theme for Americans. 
when they tell you that an English degree doesn't matter, you tell them, F off. Stop that. But it didn't help them. They lost the war. Because they needed factories. But doesn't it just go... It's true. If they'd had factories, it would have gone a lot better. People. Here's the magical key to English paper success. If you can figure out how the form of a literary work and its content are related to each other, if you can figure that out and write it down in a three-point essay, your English teachers will pronounce you a genius and they will give you A-pluses every time. Why are you shaking your head? I thought it was going to be something easier, like never use ellipses. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Sorry. Hey, look, it's the same shit over and over again. Man. Man, it makes me insane. Even though they were out for the Benjamins, it was always political to write novels, too. That might seem a little bit odd, right? So on your slide, I've got a um, signature example of a genre. What is a novel? Well, I answer this question on the next slide. Who are the bad characters and who are the good characters and how do you know from the text who a good guy is or who a bad character is? Um, what makes a character truly evil or good according to this writer? Um, other things to think about. We're used to in novels characters undergoing change. You know, they change over the course of the novel and that's how we know they're kind of real. Do any of these characters change? Um, do they stay the same? Which ones change and, and why might that have been? I'm done. Robert Frost, I got miles to go. Verse 2, change flow. <laughs> I got that vision that I'm fixing to envision it. Yeah. I got that refi with the hella prime into rest. Feeling fine by Jack, I Georgia on my mama. Jerry Lee Lee on the Kiki's. Yeah, he's 80, but he killing it. Yeah. thinking about death. <laughs> Lecture number three, Charlotte Temple. Action. I'm not ready. All right, we've got the hat, Uncle Tom. It is hat it is. Fan the paper. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? What are you listening to? All right, I think I'm ready. No, I'm not ready. Gotta calm down. Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. It's easy to imagine pop stars coming and going. Donovan? Anyone? You guys are keeping Madonna alive, right? How about the Bangles? Everybody remember the Bangles? First show I ever saw, the Bangles. The Love It Auditorium, downtown. You didn't go to that one, did you? No, my first show was Weird Al Yankovic. There you go. It's easy to imagine pop stars coming and going. He's actually still out there touring. Am I blushing? We can make you blow. We, we'll fix it in post. Good. Well a day for the poor girl who gazes on him. She is in imminent danger. You actually need to weirdly, somehow, become sexily virtuous. I am. Einstein encrusted face. Do you like my, uh, lamb? I do. Now let's get back to work. Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. Today, we are talking about Lydia Maria Child's book, Hobomock, Scotland and Among the Scottish Diaspora. Y'all right over there? There's some, uh, there's some woodpeckers over here I gotta check out. Wow. Okay, this one is obviously not, not as riveting. Did you, yeah. Do you want to look at my picture of Alice Cooper? <laughs> See you next time. Stone encrusted face. Can you uh, see I'm this? I'm just wondering if it's funny. Herbivores here. Are they bovines? <laughs> it's just cows. And action. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. Today, we're talking about George Lepard's novel, The Killers. I want to introduce a special guest first, though, my father, Professor Michael Cohen. Dad. Okay, you're you're done. Thanks, Dad. I love my father and my mother. Dad, you read The Killers. What did you think of it? Wonderful. Really? What did you like about it? This is what I always do to them in discussion. I'm like, oh, you liked it. What did you like about it? I liked the part where they're leaping from roof to roof and being burned up. There's nothing quite like incinerated <laughs> corpses. Thanks for letting us use your office. You're welcome. Appreciate it. That's my brother Dan behind the camera, by the way. Figured we'll that out. We'll show you a picture later. Yeah, I'll bet we will. In fact, I look I like saw... this. <laughs> Handsome. He wrote a literary column called the Spermaceti Papers that made fun of other writers. This, what? Gross. Do you have to bleep that out? Man. Wait, that was you though, dude. That was me, but I'll replace it with mom. Man. Poe, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and lots of other people who are super famous writers today. You must be kidding me. Don't these people know that I am performing. It's fine. Everything's fine. Sheep. Action. Man. Whatever makes you country, dude. This job is so hard. Should we sing some songs? You were the first thing that I thought of when I thought I'd drink you off my mind. I get lost in the liquor. You're the only one I find. All right, here we go. If I did the things I ought to, it'd still not be mine. So I keep a tight grip on the bottle, getting loose and killing time. Okay, well. Hello, everybody. And action. God it. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. I am sure... And action. <laughs> Do any of you have brothers? Or did you kill them and bury their bodies where nobody would find them? Things got a little freaky out on the farm. So the way they handled that was they had the old people in the community train the young people how to have sex. Dude, don't leave too long for that to sink in. Look, dude, this massive, you know, old, young, horizontal polka dance. No, stop it. Don't, <laughs> don't expand on it. Just move on. Okay. America is now wholly given over to a damned mob of scribbling women, and I should have no chance of success while the- I know, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you, people. I'll see you next time. And action. I want to move the rat and see if anybody notices. And action. So, what was I saying? And... Did that rat move? Action. I might just be hallucinating things. We're getting nowhere. Okay. It's like Groundhog Day. That movie. Plus I needed a drink. Flame. Fame. Damn it. I gotta start up. There's a lot of breathing. You want me to stop breathing? What's wrong with your face? Don't look okay? You know what? I don't give a rat's ass. That's a rat's ass there. Do you like my flowers? Let's move along, because this is a long one. Do you like my flowers? They were sent to me by an admirer. Well, partly because it's kind of tedious. And what's happening? What's wrong? The clanking and the clanking of the balls. Also, Mom's talking to herself out there. We can't have distractions. The only problem is that I don't remember anything I just said. It's Sorry, good. Sorry, I didn't convenience you in your own office. It's good having a director. 
Like, I often play three or four of your songs over the course of a semester to introduce a class. Why aren't we doing that? Well, that's what I was saying. Like, if we put your music at the end of it, you know what I'm saying? Like, with, like you did with the first one, like, that would be cool. That would be, it's not as cool as, like, having it playing when they come in. They're not going to listen to the end. Done saying your last word, they're going to stop it. Like, oh my god, thank god that is everywhere. Throwing shade on me. I just, did I forget to stir this? It doesn't, I don't know. Stir it! Action. Fuck it. Man! <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. I'm feeling good today. I've got all kinds of exciting stuff for you, including this 1984 Nebraska Huskers football team autographed football. Look, there's Tom Osborne right on there. Today we're talking about realism. I wish I'd stirred this. And action. Not good. Hello everybody and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen. And this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. I have to say thank you to my brother for operating the camera and for his editing wizardry. That's Dan Cohen behind the scenes. He's pretty cute, but guess who's super cute? My mom, who I caught making cookies in the bathroom because she didn't want the noise of the blender to disturb our video. My mom is the best. Welcome to Dark Utopias rise to fame. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you, people. I'll see you next time. Action! What the f Good lord, no. Really? Yeah. Net messages will be where? That, that was perfect. Well, here we are in Western Kentucky shooting the latest episode of What the f***? Get a novel. Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the most annoying brother in the world. Action! Yeah, you weren't expecting that, were you? Got my own sound effects this time. Fight back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. It's great to be back in the saddle again, folks. Good to see all your shining faces. It's a beautiful day here in Western Kentucky. I'm surrounded by birds and happy people. Right, Dan? Yeah. All right. I can't move it. It's crucial to the corn infrastructure. I have the best producer ever. See you next time. <laughs> In which you have an author concealing both his own identity and the level of truth that the book contains. Oh my god. It never ends. That was legit, dude. I have the best producer ever. He's like... What you doing, man? I'm trying to keep up with Twitter. They're like, oh, so-and-so talked about you, or oh, so-and-so said your project sucks. Nobody says your project sucked. Well, welcome. I'm Dan Cohen. Welcome to English 332. <coughs> Birth of the American Novel. <coughs> Today we're going to be talking about Alice Gaudry's... Al you need to read this book, seriously, man. You're going to love this book. When Patrick O'Brien began writing this book in 1832, he little understood that he would live for another 200 years. <coughs> uh, it deals with a lot of... Uh, Do you want this to end or not? Just trying to move things along, man. It's lost so much work. Whistle while you work. <laughs> so much work. Action. <laughs> Stop it! 
I'm putting these on. Goddamn. They say the little lightheartedness before a class like helps establish trust with the students. I'm like, well, what about my trust? How do I come? You know, I, students don't have to make me trust them. Hmm? Huh? Hello? Who's that? Edith? Dog? Who's at the door? Nobody. No, you called us. Hello, everybody. I can't do it. I don't have Action. a heart. Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matko, and in this, my friends. Oh, no, no, no. Too much. Too much. Too much. Try it again. I'm real excited, though. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to English 332. I am your host, Professor Matt Cohen, and this, my friends, is the birth of the American novel. Online. How was that? It's good. I've been cutting the online out every time, though, because it... Really? Yeah, it messes with my flow. Yeah. Well, it doesn't feel right. you're a punk. Yeah. By the time this goes to print, you'll already know that, though. I guess that's probably By true. By the time this hits the newsstands... I want to thank my brother Dan for being the magic behind the camera and behind the editing of these, even though sometimes the editing makes me look like an idiot. I guess it's honest in certain ways. Have you been enjoying this, Dan? I have. All right. Ability of experts to help guide society. Ulysses, good luck with that one. Like, you see in these pictures, they all look kind of insane. But I think that's pretty accurate, actually. Yeah. Do you see this? <clears throat> <laughs> Losing it. And they're debating. Drinking whiskey. Action. I don't believe you. Action. Oh my god. Dude, we're finally getting toward the end of these things. Do you feel like you learned anything from watching all of these? Eh. You didn't read the novels. No. So it's just like a regular class that I took in college. <laughs> Even the classic marriage plot. Dismissed. Thanks for being with me this semester. I look forward to seeing you in the future. Action. dance in the future. Ah! I'm fine. God, only a couple of pages left and I'm dying. 